Minnesota Timberwolves have been eliminated from the postseason by the Memphis Grizzlies. They are unluckily number 22 that now enters the offseason, and they are also the 22nd offseason article that we have done. You can go on uh, ESPN.com, and uh, it's on the NBA page right now. You can also go on my Twitter feed in my profile. There is a pinned tweet that has a landing page for all 22 teams, and uh, we will get to 30 eventually sometime in uh, mid-June. Big picture approach. Uh, certainly 46 wins, second most in 17 years. Back to the playoffs. Um, you know, most you know playoff wins that you've had in, what, 18, 19 years. Um, successful season is based on where this team ha was. Um, a perennial lottery team. We all know the uh, futility that's been in, in Minnesota, except for that one year that Tibbs led them with Jimmy Butler and Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns to the playoffs. And we all know how that ended the next year and um, kind of, you know, haven't been able to figure it out since. But the big picture approach, it was a successful season. Um, the small picture approach, I guess, in this kind of the small window and the, um, um, disappointment, uh, missed opportunity. Uh, I thought uh, Minnesota had this Memphis team on the ropes. Certainly led what seventy-five. Saw that stat seventy-five percent of the series. Uh, blown opportunities. Certainly game six, letting a lead slide, um, and that was kind of the trend here. I mean, you can chalk it up to the second youngest team in the playoffs, um, only behind Memphis. Um, you could chalk it up to guys like uh, Anthony Edwards not being in the postseason. Carl Anthony Towns, only second postseason. Um, I just thought that protecting the lead, um, the uh, lack of self-awareness on offense, um, the rust shots at the end of game, certainly Towns' shot uh, at the end of game six, um, you know, basically a 28-foot three-pointer top of the key. Um, I just thought it was a missed opportunity because here's the problem. The Western Conference is going to get awfully tough. And uh, I like New Orleans' roster better than I like um, Minnesota's roster. And you now you have uh, Denver that will likely get better uh, with Porter and um, uh, Jamal Murray. The Clippers, are going, the Clippers will not be a playing team. Um, so who are you bumping out of the top six to get there, to take that next step here? Maybe Utah. We'll see what happens there. But um, the West is loaded um, when you look at Phoenix and Dallas and um, Golden State. Certainly this Grizzlies team is not going anywhere. Um, when you have an opportunity to get the second round, you, you take advantage of it here. And I just, I look at it as a, uh, as a missed opportunity in the, in the small picture, but big picture, certainly a, a good season here. And um, you've got most of your roster coming back. The core returns. The big question is going to be as far as will Carl Anthony Towns earn all NBA? Um, if he does, he's super max, uh, extension eligible. Um, that's going to be, you know, that's, it's a, it's a big number. I mean, him and Devin Booker are super max eligible. Um, when you look at it, I'm just pulling up here. I mean, it's four years, $211 million, uh, 47.1 is the first year and the last year is 58.4. That's a big number And town. Certainly had a heck of a year, but you've got the durability part of it, um, is he a franchise level player? I think he's a, an all star, all NBA player. I don't think he's a top 10 player. I don't think he's a build your franchise around. But what does Minnesota have? To, you know, what's their option? You, do, you don't do it. You piss off a player, and now he becomes a free agent. And um, he won't become a free agent until 22, 23, until the offseason of 24. Um, that's going to be the big thing. I mean, I, as I called him, he was the forgotten all star. Because of everything that's happened in Minnesota with a lack of stability, a head coach, their poor play, uh, certainly injuries, he became the forgotten all-star, and, and good for him. He certainly has dealt with a lot of a lot of adversity and, and challenges, you know, in his career, and um, he rebounded and he played like an All NBA player here. But now it's time to now you got to pay, right? If you're Minnesota, if he makes All NBA, four years, two eleven. Um, as far as the rest of the roster here, you've got, um, what, 12 players coming back under contract. Um, your core group is, is here. You extended Patrick Beverly um, during the regular season. Um, 
2022-23 is kind of like a bridge year to 23 before you have to make a decision on um, you know, D'Angelo Russell. Um, you've got, you know, Edwards will be ex Anthony Edwards will be extension eligible next year. Um, your big, your, uh, your big uh, free agent, I guess, is going to be Torian Prince here. Uh, you've got to figure out what you're going to do with D'Angelo Russell. Uh, on an expiring contract, extension eligible, um, benched in game four, uh, game six in the fourth quarter uh, for Jordan McLaughlin. Um, that's going to be an interesting call because if you don't extend him, he is going to probably be a trade candidate for you here. Um, you look at, uh, you've got 11 players under, under contract. Uh, Nas Reed and Jalen Noel have team options here, but your, your free agents are Torian Prince, Josh Okoji, and Jake Lehman. So your core group is going to be back. Now it's a matter of like, how do you take that next step? Towns, Russell, Beasley, Beverly, Edwards, Vanderbilt, McDaniels, Bolarmo, McLaughlin, Reed, Noel. It's a good core, but it's like, the, does it just because the, the the experience of being in the playoffs and the disappointment and then does that use as fuel in the off season in another year of development? It potentially could because barring a trade, um, you're returning your group here. Um, you know, you've got you've got needs probably a little. You need some depth that you're small and power forward. Um, and certainly, McDaniel's played great um, in Game Six. Um, different gave them a little bit of a different you know, twist with uh, Vanderbilt on the bench. You've got four draft picks. You got one first and three seconds, and you got all your futures. Um, your cap sheet's good. You've got your 10-3 mid-level and your 4-1 biannual. You got a trade exception of 4.8, and you got $50 million of expiring contracts here. So you can go out and, you know, you've got $123 million in salary. You're about 26 under the under the luxury tax. So you can go out and use your mid-level exception and still be under. So all in all, from a from a flexibility, not stuck in the mud, not a dead end roster. Um, you've got the flexibility to go out and do a trade, 50 million in expiring contracts. Um, so there is there are, there is things out there as far as resources. Certainly the draft and three having three seconds. Yeah, all you got to do is find one that can come in and, and become a role player here. So all in all, big picture approach. You're in a lot better shape than you were last year, the year before, the year before after that. Um, but now it's about as I said, we said, talked about um, New Orleans taking that next step to not become just an annual play-in team, um, to become one of these top six teams, to be where Dallas is every year. Um, and that's going to have to start with certainly Towns um, and then Anthony Edwards. Um, we'll see what happens with D'Angelo Russell as far as that extension. But um, Minnesota's offseason is up. Big questions are going to be watch out for All NBA, which usually comes out in mid-May. That dictates what happens with Carl Anthony Towns, certainly Devin Booker, um, the Russell extension, not extension, uh, four draft picks in June. Uh, also, um, uh, Sachin uh, Gupta, who um, is their interim, I guess we call him, um, basketball operations uh, head. Uh, he took over when Gerson Rosas was let go back in. Man, I feel like it feels like it was like four years ago. I guess it was late September, maybe early October. They'll have to make a decision on him, and I think he's done a great job. I, you know, you, you you need people in the organization that kind of just are in the background and managing, bringing stability. Um, the Beverly extension certainly um, no blockbuster trades. Kind of uses this year as an evaluation tool, um, but he's really really good and people probably don't know who he is um, and sometimes your lead your head of your basketball operations department you don't have to be the, the main guy in front and pounding the table and uh, between him and Chris Finch uh, Joe Branch who's their assistant GM they've got a good core nucleus here as far as from an infrastructure from a front office and a coaching standpoint so I hope he they lift um, I don't I don't think they have it's the interim tag but I hope they do make him the full-time head of uh, basketball operations because he certainly has done a good job and now it's kind of him putting his imprint on what this roster could be thanks for watching espn on youtube for live streaming sports and premium content subscribe to espn plus